What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, and I know you know we're just going to have a Jackson State day today, man. We had our interview, Malachi Wideman, Jackson State wide receiver, dropped this morning, so make sure to go check that out right after this. I know a lot of you guys were excited to see him uh, being on the show and hearing what he had to say about the season, Jackson State, the SWAC movement, everything like that, but we have to also get to our Jackson State recruiting outlook. I was supposed to drop it yesterday, but when everything worked out with Malachi, I figured why not move it right after the interview to just have a whole Jackson State day in the course, previewing the national championship tomorrow. So we have a packed, packed show uh, this week, man. We have a lot going on, but let's get right to it. And so um, usually the way these recruiting outlooks are is I'll, I'll consider the top recruits in each class. But since I've already covered the Travis Hunter commitment, the Mark Pope commitment, and some of these commitments, I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and cover some of the other recruits in the class already. But let's get to what the biggest needs were for Jackson State, in my opinion. And we're starting with one that if you've watched the show, you knew I was going to say it. And that was offensive line. For me, offensive line was the number one need for Jackson State over anything. They had to fix their offensive line issues because it, if they, and really and truly, if they didn't have Shador Sanders and the pocket presence and the escapability that he had in the pocket, I really do think Jackson State would have been in trouble in a lot of the games that they played. I don't know if they escaped Baton Rouge with the win against Southern. You know, that all corn game could have looked a lot different, even though the defense was playing lights out. And there, there were there were a few other games, probably possibly the FAMU game, where they don't get out with the win if Shador Sanders doesn't, you know, bail out this offensive line at times. Now, you know, the, the, the positive point was that Alabama A&M game, but they really lack a bona fide pass rusher that challenged them. And Tony Gray played sparingly at times. The tackle spots were up and down. They had some real big bright spots, but ultimately – the biggest issue was that center guard, uh, center guard, uh, guard combo that they had on the inside of the offensive line. They got pushed around. They weren't physical enough. They didn't show the aggression that I thought they needed to, to be a, uh, to be a celebration bowl winner. Ultimately, that's what cost them is that, that offensive line couldn't establish the run. They couldn't protect Shador Sanders, and really and truly, it caught up to them in the penultimate game this year. So offensive line was the biggest need for me they needed size they needed experience and they needed people who could gel together and just never seemed like the offensive line found their footing together they weren't communicating well they weren't they weren't working in unison and they really just seemed to be off kilter all season long so offensive line was number was the number one need if jackson state i'm not saying have the best offensive line in the swag if they can have a top five offensive line in the swag, there's a lot of teams that would have been in trouble if Shador Sanders would have had the time he needed to go make the play. Now, for the second need, you know, I know some people might disagree with this, but I, I have running back. I know Pickett and Santi Marshall and J.D. Martin are all there, but for me, they lack that bona fide big play hitter that they need. They don't have that explosiveness that they need at the running back spot. And I guess the best example of what I think they're missing is like a Ledemian Brooks for Prairie View, where you knew any given time, if you gave him the ball, he could take it. He could take it to the distance. Caleb Johnson for Mississippi Valley State, somebody like that is, I think what they need to, you know, take this offense over the top, the wide receiver spot loaded. Malachi Wadman, you know, you had you had hooks, you have a bunch of recruits coming in this year, including even Travis Hunter, who could play both ways. But the running back spot just doesn't have that guy. They have a bunch of guys who, you know, can play well at times. You know, Peyton Pickett had his moment. Santi Marshall did too. J.D. Martin was used sparingly, but they don't have that X factor at the running back spot. And so that's what I think they need. You know, a lot of people have been linking Zach Evans, even though he's been pretty much crystal ball to either stay at TCU or go to Ole Miss, but you never know when you don't want to count Jackson State out. But they need that game changer at the running back spot because their offensive line needs a little bit of help. And I know a lot of people just put all the issues on the offensive line, but I just don't think they had a running back that, in my opinion, could change the game for them. They don't have a game change of running back. And then finally, I know a lot of people might disagree with this, but I, I think defensive line was a big need coming into this recruiting cycle, especially with James Houston leaving Antoine Owens. They needed, they needed, I think this was more of an auxiliary need in terms of depth for Jackson State, where 
Yes, you have Niles Gaddy, Coyness Miller. Yes, you have Katron Evans coming back as well. But I think you just needed pure depth, especially at the defensive end spot. And I think they've addressed that thus far. But that was a big need coming into this class, for me at least, is that you needed to solidify your defensive line depth. Because I think it, we can all agree here that the biggest thing separating some of these teams from some of the top teams is depth at the line of scrimmage. And so depth at the O-line and D-line spot was very important for Coach Prime and this coaching staff to achieve in this recruiting class now. Who are some of the top recruits? And we're going to, you know, I know a lot of people have already released videos, so I'm not you know, going to sit 20 minutes breaking down these guys. But the first one that I have to talk about, and this is one that I think is the quality of the gym. Like, yes, of course, Travis Hunter is going to get all the shine, but this kid might make the biggest impact next season for Jackson State, and that's Evan Henry, offensive lineman, three-star, Louisiana Monroe transfer. And this was – this was needed, man. Like I said, the guard center guard combo was atrocious last season. And this guy comes in all Sunbelt honorable mention in 2020, graded out as a winner, which is winning 80% of the snaps in nine of the 10 games he played in 2020 and led his team in pancakes for the season. Going back to high school was a two time all district selection at DeSoto High School out of Texas and an academic all-state selection and I mean this guy can do it all he comes with experience he comes with size and listen 6 3 3 10 is going to be a problem on the interior of that Jackson State offensive line if if he can come in and live up to everything he lived up to at Louisiana Monroe which I think he can and I do think he's immediate upgrade over the guards they already had on the roster last year Evan Henry is going to immediately solidify that inside of that offensive line and he is just a physical bruiser. And the number one thing, and I've mentioned this on a few episodes, I did see the intensity and the the grit of the offensive line that they need that that they needed, especially in run blocking. Evan Henry brings that man. He plays with a recklessness where he's almost he's almost playing to punish you every single play. And that mentality is something that I really think the uh, Jackson State offensive line really needed. And so I really do think Evan Henry potentially could be the biggest one of the biggest additions in this Jackson State recruiting class. And then of course, big country Josh Griffiths, edge, three-star Florida State transfer, and. This he plays a role which I was just talking about adding depth to that edge spot. That's a major strength for 2021 was that edge spot with James Houston and and those boys. But depth can't be overlooked, and he contributed at Florida State as a young player, multiple tackles in his first game against Georgia Tech last season. But he the the biggest thing for for him is he's still raw and has a lot of developing to do. But he was out of IMG Academy, and he's not afraid to play with the top talent. And him going to play at IMG and still being a highly recruited athlete, pick Florida State over Louisville and some other ACC schools, he never was overshined by the pure five-star talent they had on the field. He was still contributing, had five-and-a-half sacks his senior year on a defense that had over 34 sacks for the season, had 16 tackles in his first year at IMG. And for me, I think this season, this upcoming season for 2022, this is more of a depth pickup. But I think Griffiths could be the future of the edge position for Jackson State. I don't see him being a starter this year. I still think a player like Niles Gaddy is better right now, or better suited to contribute immediately. But I think you're going to see him use his specialized roles. I think due to his size and physicality, you're going to see him play situational football, goal line, you know, rush defense schemes due to his size. But I think this was a pickup for the future and much needed depth this season for Jackson State with this pickup. And then, of course, the most recent pickup, Kavion Mullins, tight end, former four-star South Carolina transfer. This gives the Tigers a hyper-athletic option at the tight end spot. But if you look in his past, he's used to he used to play wide receiver, so he's athletic enough to step outside into that role Jackson State wants to utilize him there like he did, especially his first season at South Carolina, but a little bit in his second year. And, you know, I know the production numbers aren't there for Jackson State tight ends or Mullins on paper, but when you look at it, he he played early on the season, had three catches for 110 yards, and was actually injured in the LSU game after he went 
for two catches, 101 yards, and got tackled and rolled up on his leg and missed the rest of the season. He's an SEC academic honor roll selection. And I really do think, you know, Jackson State needed to utilize the tight end more last year. There were a lot of really good tight ends on that roster, and I know a lot of Jackson State fans were frustrated by that. But I do think Mullen's versatility where he could step outside, play the slot, play an H-back role, play a tight end role, play a fullback role, his versatility is going to allow him to see the field early and often for Jackson State, in my opinion. So I do think Jackson State has to find a way to get him on the field quickly. And so I think Mullins is going to be a really big pickup for Jackson State. And then finally, then before we just kind of cover who else they landed, another guy I want to highlight is Christian Henderson. Offensive lineman out of Copia Lincoln Community College, also played at Louisiana Tech. He's another O-line recruit that, uh, O-line recruit that will at least add depth for me and allow some real competition to develop in that offensive line room, which is just something Jackson State really, really needed. He was a Mississippi-Alabama All-Star Game selection, a three-time All-District um, selection in high school, and he's had he has over 30 games of experience throughout Louisiana Tech and Copia Lincoln, and he's paved the way for some dominant rushing offenses, especially in JUCO. And he never shot away from the moment. And he he played in one of the most competitive conferences in, in the can, in the Kansas Jayhawk Junior College uh, Conference over there with Indy and a lot of those big schools. He played against the best of the best. He played against the Jeffrey Emba, who now is committed to Auburn and was the number one JUCO player in the country. He's played against the top defensive linemen out of JUCO. He played against uh, the linebacker who just who just committed to um, FAMU out of Indy. He's played against these guys, and he's, and, he's, and he's shown that he can be dominant physical at the point of attack. So I do think even if he might not earn a starting role, he immediately adds depth at that offensive tackle position. I would be interested to see if Jackson State can slide him into an interior role and let Tony Gray and some of those other guys man the tackle spots. But, you know, for the rest of the class, man, you know, of course, you got Jason Mercer, edge guy out of FIU going to add a lot of depth to that edge position. It could possibly start on the other side of, of Niles Gaddy. And then, of course, Travis Hunter, cornerback, five-star, number one overall prospect in the country. I'll link his episode at the end of this episode. And then Jones Fortland, a wide receiver, three-star, a top 150 wide receiver prospect in this class. Of course, Keelan Kennedy, a three-star Garden City Community College transfer, one of the best corners in the JUCO ranks. Mark Pope, four-star wide receiver from Miami. I have an episode on him as well that I'll link at the end. Michael Please, three-star linebacker from Southern Miss, and also can play a box safety look. And then, of course, Jordan Williams and Cameron Buckley, wide receiver, three-star, both from Al- both from Indiana. And both guys are going to bring a lot to that wide receiving core. Now, you know, for, moving forward, who in the transfer portal could Jackson State look at next? I got a few names that I do think Jackson State could use. And on top of that, Jackson State could really, really target now. It starts at the running back spot. Christian Beal, running back Wake Forest, was kind of caught up in a pass-first offense. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He offered a very explosive option for Wake Forest. He was on this Wake Forest team who made a run to that ACC championship game, so he knows what it's like to play on a winning team. And I think he would fit real well in this offense due to his pass-catching ability and him already playing with a – great quarterback in, in, um, in Sam Hartman at Wake Forest. He, I think he'll fit right in next to Shador Sanders. So Christian Beal out of Wake Forest is a guy to watch. Also, you know, Jackson State went out and landed Cornus Miller from Auburn. Well, Dre Butler, defensive tackle, Auburn transfer, would be a great addition to that interior of the defensive line. Came out of Indy Community College, a, a JUCO guy. I think Dre Butler would add a lot of depth to that defensive tackle spot and allow Jackson State to be real versatile in the looks that they gave and also keeping fresh bodies late in the game, which was a problem down the stretch in the Celebration Bowl. Also, Devin Bush, four-star Arkansas transfer, a safety. I think this kid would fit perfectly in that in that defensive backfield. I know defensive back is a real strength right now for Jackson State, But I think Devin Bush could just put that secondary over the top where you would probably have seven, 
eight guys in that back end of the defense that could start any given weekend. And any time you can add depth and any time you can add more talent into what your number one strength probably already is, I think Devin Bush could be that guy for Jackson State. And then, of course, another running back. Desmond Jackson, running back from Oklahoma State, he kind of got swept up in the fray, especially with Jalen Warren emerging Utah State transfer that led Oklahoma State to the Big 12 championship. Desmond Jackson, extremely athletic. He can be, I think he, in, in my opinion, would be an immediate upgrade over what Jackson State already has a running back. He's played in, in that Mike Gundy system, and I think he's going to fit right into what Jackson State wants to do. And then, of course, Ray Curry Jr., offensive line, Arkansas transfer, big physical, played in a run-heavy offense where they was just downhill and they want to maul you. And I think his mindset and his skill set will fit right into what Jackson State needs on the interior of that offensive line. So those are just a few names to kind of keep your mind on and, and keep listening. Of course, Every day we're waiting to see about those other five stars that Jackson State may or may not be, you know, landing on National Signing Day. But as we get closer, more news will come out. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. But the grade to end this episode, how would I grade Jackson State's class? And for me, I went back and forth with this, but this this class has become the standard, especially after Travis Hunter um was land, was landed as the number one player in the country. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't give it an A plus because every other SWAT class is going to be compared to this class, whether it's right or wrong. Everyone's going to say, "Okay, that's great what you did, Grantham. That's great what you did, Southern. That's great what you did, Fam." What does that compare to Jackson State? Because they have the target on their back as the former champs. But anytime you land the number one player in the country, the first ever five star for an HBCU and or an entire FCS program you got to get an A-plus in my books. I'm giving Jackson State's class an A-plus right now, and it's nowhere near finished. So I'll keep you guys updated on the latest uh, commitments coming into Jackson, man. But I appreciate y'all tuning in. Hit the like button on your way out. Make sure to comment your thoughts on Jackson State's recruiting class, who you also can see joining the class and what you think the, the you know next needs are for Jackson. Who do you, What positions do you want to see them address moving forward? And, of course, click over right after this video to go check out our Malachi Wadman interview, man. Shout out to Malachi for coming on. Great kid, and I'll be, I know we'll all be rooting for him moving forward as he starts his basketball season today for Jackson State, guys. But until next time, the Blue Bloods are out.